everybody and welcome to Let's Look at Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag. The new nautical pirate themed Assassin's Creed from the guys at Ubisoft. Guys and gals at Ubisoft, I don't want to be necessarily exclusive here. So this is the PC version of Assassin's Creed 4. Obviously the console versions either on next gen or on 360 and PS3 came out a little bit earlier uh, than this. I'm actually not aware if this is on Wii U or not. I'm not deliberately excluding it, I just don't know. Um, but the PC version is out, I've gotten my hands on it and uh, I've spent a good deal of time with it so far and I'm actually going to break up my Let's Look At into two pieces. Uh, there's going to be a Let's Look At which is this one which is going to cover the single player, and then there's going to be a Let's Look At which covers the multiplayer. There's a couple reasons for this. One of them is that uh, both of these are very robust in their own right. The multiplayer is actually a great deal of fun uh, as well, but also it does that weird kind of like Call of Duty thing on Steam where you have to actually leave the single player game and then it closes and boots up like a new multiplayer client. So anyway, it just makes sense in my mind to split it up into two. Uh, I probably played about uh, three and a half to four hours of the single player so far. Um, and maybe an hour and a half to two hours of the multiplayer so far. So uh, I feel like I'm relatively qualified to give my first impressions on both of them. Let's boot into this here. I have about 10% uh, done. And we'll just do uh, a mission in the single player here. So, uh, in terms of setting up the story of what's going on in Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag here, we are playing as Edward Kenway, and he is a privateer from Wales who ended up in the Caribbean and uh, got sunk. Like, his pirate ship was in a fight with some other uh, navies, I believe the Spanish Navy, and he ended up being sunk uh, on Nassau in the Caribbean, I believe. So, during the course of this, uh, when he was shipwrecked, he came across a member of the Assassin's Guild. Uh, he killed the member of the Assassin's Guild, and then he took on the Assassin's Quest, which was to, like, deliver... Oh, that is uh, like a, a deer or something, or an antelope that I could kill and possibly uh, make some holsters or something out of. But, um... Yeah, he, uh, he got the mission of the assassin, which was to deliver this information to the Templars. He was like an, a defector of the assassins. You know, the, the conflict between the assassins and the Templars is a central theme in the Assassin's Creed games. Uh, and then eventually he defected from the Templars because he went there and he tried to steal their money. And, and here we are, basically. <laughs> and now I've, I've commanded my own ship at this point, And there's a lot of sailing. Sailing is definitely uh, kind of a principal theme in Assassin's Creed 4. Just to give you an idea of my uh, experience with the Assassin's Creed series so far, skipped one, skipped two, played Brotherhood, loved the shit out of Brotherhood, probably one of my favorite games of uh, 2010, skipped uh, Revelations, skipped three, which, I, you know, critical consensus was pretty good on, but uh, whenever anybody talks to me about Assassin's Creed 3, they seem to think that it's the worst of the series. Let's go back to our ship here. Uh, and now I'm here playing Assassin's Creed 4, and to spoil my overall impressions, uh, I really think that Assassin's Creed 4 is a really good game. If you have problems with this game, they're going to be the same problems that you have with the Assassin's Creed franchise, and, and kind of the problems that come from a franchise getting fatigued over, you know, yearly release over the course of the past like five or six years. Uh, I'm going to be talking over the dialogue here for a part of that, but at least subtitles are on. So, yeah, th one of the strengths, we'll talk about the strengths first, but um, one of the major strengths is this nautical stuff. It's really satisfying uh, to kind of navigate and be involved in the sailing stuff, you know? It, it's You can upgrade your ship kind of the same way that you could upgrade, you know, a vehicle in, in other games. Uh, and the same way you can upgrade your equipment as well by buying new weapons and stuff like that. But it's really an, in an interesting kind of satisfying way of traveling around to actually navigate the high seas. It's very intuitive, it's very easy, and you get into these really large-scale naval battles. Um, in fact, we could probably just uh, get in conflict with a ship right now. As I actually look on the map here, I can see that there are some ships around me. So what I can do is actually take out my spyglass and look over there. Actually, I need to get a little bit closer. But once I uh, actually am able to see that ship, uh, I can use my spyglass to identify how strong it is. So uh, just give me a second here, and we should be able to make it happen. Um, we'll just point ourselves in this direction first. Unfortunately, we're going against the wind. It doesn't make an enormous difference, but uh, kind of annoying. Okay, so we can look at this and we can say, okay, it's a schooner from Paloma Blanca, and it's got 25 wood and 10 sugar on it. So we're going to try to catch up to this ship. Uh, and if we catch up to it, we can get into a battle with it. And if we uh, cripple it, basically, then we can board it and steal its cargo, or we could just shoot it down. Uh, sink it and salvage uh, half of the cargo from it, its sunken wreck, if that makes sense. So we'll just uh, navigate up to this, and then we should be able to get into a conflict with it. Hopefully we don't get into, uh, we don't draw aggro from too many other ships in the area, or we might have some problems. We're still very early on in this kind of nautical aspect. This is a really good time to show off how you can get involved in uh, naval combat. So let's take a shot at this guy as soon as I get close enough. There we go. Um, so the way that this works... Uh, effectively is, oh man, this thing's almost already done, is we can just pan around our ship with the right analog stick and select weapons. You can see that my cannons are being highlighted right now. Uh, so I can go over to those, and I'll slow down here and just shoot my cannons like that. Very easy to aim, 
Uh, and then I'll just rotate myself around. And we may be able to board the ship if I uh, do this properly. I can't really see because of the smoke that's around me right now. But uh, their, their ship is obviously incapacitated. But if I manage to close in on it here, I should be able to board it. And then we can uh, get involved in some hand-to-hand -hand combat, which is going to be important to show off, of course, as we are playing an Assassin's Creed game here. Uh, and there we go. Hold B to board. Cool. So we'll get this done, and we'll, we'll swing onto the enemy ship and, and kill their crew, and then uh, take over the vessel for ourselves and get the uh, the resources they have. So we're just going to jump into the water and do a little bit of swimming here, uh, which comes up fairly periodically. We could have also just walked across uh, on those uh, ropes, but that takes a little while. So instead, why don't we get our hands a little bit dirty and charred here? We'll get involved with some combat. So this is very... Uh you know, Assassin's Creedy style combat here, which is to say, you know, it's a little bit similar to the combat in something like Sleeping Dogs or the combat in something like uh, the Batman games from uh, Rocksteady and WB. So basically, it's it's a counter-based uh, form of combat rather than a button masher. So I just kind of wait around until uh, the enemy gets kind of a prompt over their head and then I press the dodge button. We actually lost one of our crew there. Crew is a, oh, two of our crew. Crew are resources uh, that we can pick up when we're in towns or in ports. Uh, we can recruit them and then bring them aboard our ship. Unfortunately, we lost a couple there, but we killed enough men on the ship that everybody else is going to surrender, and we will get all of the resources. So we've got this little cutscene here. Uh, the combat is actually one of the biggest negatives, I would say, about Assassin's Creed 4. We're going to use our resources to repair our ship here because we did take some cannon fire. Um, yeah, it's, it's one of the largest negatives, and I, I really mean that genuinely. This is not like, oh, it's a negative, but it's still pretty satisfying. It is, you know, fairly satisfying, but at the same time, uh, it's the same combat that, you know, we've experienced over, you know, the, the, the franchise before. Even exclusively play- uh, are you seriously gonna get into combat with me? I guess we are gonna have to shoot down this ship as well. Maybe I'll just try to salvage this one instead of, uh, actually getting involved in the, the whole boarding aspect. Because you don't really have to board them if you don't want to. It's substantially faster. Uh, to just, oh, let's slow down here. It's just substantially faster to just sink them and then take the cargo from the bottom of the ocean, basically. So they're sunk. Uh, in fact, we don't even need to take the cargo if you don't want to. Let's just sail off to our next objective. Anyway, as I was saying, hand-to-hand -hand combat, it's getting a little tired at this point, and my main complaint is that it's super, super easy. Uh, you can be surrounded by, you know, nine or ten dudes, and they will still attack you largely one by one, so you just kind of wait around, press the B button, and then you combo one dude to death, and sometimes as you're comboing that dude, another dude will attack you, and you just hit the, the counter button, and then you move on to him instead, and it's sometimes, a, you know, a methodical process, it's not necessarily unsatisfying, but it is at this point, like, it's, I realize that this is an action game and not necessarily a stealth based game, but by the same token, it's far too easy to just melee everybody. And, you know, this is uh, something that's been endemic to the Assassin's Creed franchise for a while, at least as far as I can tell. It definitely, that was one of my biggest problems with Brotherhood. It's like, sure, the combat feels fluid, but um, it, it, it's also, it doesn't incentivize stealth enough for my taste, and that is kind of uh, how I feel about it in this game as well. You know, it, it seems like stealth is always like a secondary objective. Like, your primary objective is just do this, and your secondary objective is like do this without actually getting yourself involved in combat. Um, we're in a restricted area here, and what this means is that uh, we'll be able to sh see the vision cones on some of the ships that we come across. So, oh, locate the, we're, we're actually looking for a ship right now, so I gotta use the spyglass to figure out which one it is, which is fine. Um, Anyway, long story short, stealth is uh, an incentive, but definitely not a requirement. Melee hand-to-hand -hand combat is uh, far too easy, in my opinion. And, you know, again, when I started this video, what I meant to say is that, you know, if, if you have problems with this game, a lot of those problems are going to be problems that you have with the Assassin's Creed franchise in general. I think this is a very good Assassin's Creed game. I really like navigating on the water. I really like uh, the, the cities that we end up in. We're no, we're no longer in, like, you know, Renaissance Italy. Uh, we're, we're in the Caribbean in kind of the... Eight, the yeah, the 18th century or the, the late 17th century, which is really cool. It's, it's a neat setting. Oh, we're actually in a storm here, which is a little scary. And, you know, you do actually have to navigate your ship uh, according to kind of, you know, I'm not actually a sailor myself, but uh, you have to navigate choppy waters sometimes. There are huge waves that will come at you, and there's a whole new level of strategy involved in, you know, getting from point A to point B that is not, ooh, is this the ship that we need? No. In fact, this ship will be very angry at us, and we may need to shoot it down. Um, not that it's a plane or anything like that, but let's use our travel speed here and just turn around because I don't want to end up in their vision cone, if at all possible. Okay, so travel speed is just, not only is it a third-person camera, it's also a little bit faster. So we're looking for, uh, one ship in particular here, and hopefully I'll be able to find this as soon as possible. Uh, I believe it is a Spanish vessel, so if we can see the Spanish flag, that might help us. That could be it. La Arca de la Maestro, or del Maestro, that's the one right there. 
Okay, so we're going to tail this ship. This mission right here, just to set the uh, kind of pretense, is that um, we're trying to set up this, like, independent republic for pirates. Because we're sick of dealing with the monarchy, basically, right? Corrupt kings and clergy. Uh, so instead, we're going to set up an independent uh, republic of uh, pirates. But what we need is some kind of defense for our port. Ooh, uh, so, in order to do that, we're going to need to... Oh, I'm probably going to anger that ship. I'm going to try to get out of its vision range because it is getting aggroed, unfortunately. Oh, God, hurry. Go faster. I am going to probably get detected. Or maybe not. Okay, lucky me. Uh, let's turn around and make sure we're tailing the ship here. And, th you know, this is another problem that I have with the Assassin's Creed franchise in general. Uh, that is definitely a problem in Assassin's Creed 4 as well, in my opinion. Is there's so many missions that are just like, tail this person. And then it's like, oh, you're too close. And then you hang back for a bit and it's like, oh, you're too far away. And I'm like, okay, the cute trick, but I don't necessarily like it that much. It feels like I'm bringing up a lot of negatives, but I really have been enjoying my time with Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag so far. Um, it it's just... There's parts of the game that I am able to hold my prejudices of the franchise against it, if that makes sense. Parts of it do feel a little tired, but uh, certainly this is uh, a, an enjoyable third-person action game. If you have problems with the Assassin's Creed franchise, this probably won't change your mind, but if you're okay with the Assassin's Creed franchise, and I say that because I don't know if anybody's still super excited about this, uh, this property, but if you are, then you're, this is definitely uh, the kind of game that you may find yourself interested in. And the story is very deftly told like it, it, the presentation is fantastic unfortunately it's largely been dusk or sunset here so you haven't really uh been able to see a lot of the game's really impressive visuals but genuinely on pc this runs super well and is one of the best looking games i think i've ever played in all honesty and that's just that's not just me blowing smoke up uh, up your ass this is actually like a very very uh genuinely beautiful game uh, and you'll especially see that uh, when we end up getting involved in these cities and, and, and whatnot. And in the cutscenes as well. It, it's a fantastic looking game. I've seen people complain about uh, the quality of the PC port, but I have not noticed any issues uh, with that, except for some connection issues with the multiplayer side, which I'll talk about when I do the multiplayer video, uh, which is also a, a very interesting aspect of the game. So I'm pretty sure that I'm going to be discovered by um, that ship on the other side of me here, unless I'm able to navigate out of its vision cone here. Okay. Lucky me, we should probably slow down so that we don't, uh... I mean, the ship has to know that we are tailing it at this point, right? Like, this mission basically seems to be, like, avoid the vision cones of your enemies, which is is fine. For whatever reason, I guess this ship has nobody on its, uh... I don't know, what is the the rudder side? So they can't, uh, notice that I'm here, which is strange, but also acceptable. Uh, in any case, hopefully this mission allows us to get on land soon, because I've already shown off some of the naval stuff. The naval stuff is maybe the strongest stuff in the game. It's kind of unfortunate that you're not just... I mean, it's nice that we have, like, a purpose-driven nautical trip here, uh, but it's also awesome if you uh, are just going from point A to point B, because your crew sing sea shanties and stuff, and they'll get stuck in your head, what would you do with a drunken sailor, etc., etc. It adds a nice little uh, level of immersion and atmosphere to the game as well. Also, in terms of the presentation, voice work is stellar. Story, maybe not the most interesting uh, story in my opinion, but, uh, you know, that's kind of par for the course in, you know, most video games in general, in all honesty. There's actually a dude over here who needs to be rescued, uh, and if I press the X button, we just get him as a crew member. Maybe a little bit immersion breaking, but uh, that's one way to replenish your crew resources. You can also save them from towns. You'll be in a port or something, and you'll see that a pirate's about to be executed. You can shoot the rope on his noose, and he'll fall down, and then you can rescue him, and uh, he'll he'll be a part of your crew from that point on. So, um, yeah, it, like I said, it's unfortunate that uh, you... Ooh, slow down. It's unfortunate that uh, we're not just kind of aimlessly sailing here. It's nice because we have a, a mission, but... Uh, Additionally, I would like to get into some actual combat here. And showing off, like, kind of just going from point A to point B with sailing is really fun. Uh, again, because of the sea shanty stuff. All right, so I imagine... What the heck? All right, we're going to have some kind of naval battle here first. Again, I haven't done this uh, this mission yet, so I have no idea what's going on here. Normally, I... Um, we're going to rescue some of these people. Normally, we are going to um, do missions that I've already done before in these videos, but uh, for this one we're not. We're gonna do a, a new one because uh, I'm not sure if I can actually go back and redo those old memory sequences. Probably! Oh, okay, so stay out of mortar fire. This seems a little scary. This is actually a, a very long naval mission so far. I, I don't think I've encountered one that's been quite this long so far. We're definitely inside of that range here. Um, you can see my, my ship's health bar up there on the 
uh, top left. Additionally, if we're about to be hit by fire, we can hold the X button down. I am playing this with the controller, by the way. And uh, you can brace for impact, and, and that will lower the damage that your crew takes, minimize the risk that they get knocked overboard, and also uh, minimize the amount of damage that your ship takes in general. So, uh, so far so good when it comes to avoiding the mortar fire. We're just taking it at a very laborious pace here. It's kind of cool that we're able to show off so much of the naval stuff, because I do think this is the strongest kind of new aspect of uh, Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag. Okay, what is this? We've got to sink the Spanish ships. All right, so we're going to get into uh, a little bit more naval combat here, and that should be fine. Uh, th this ship can handle itself. I am definitely not going to board any of these uh, ships. Instead, I will just focus on shooting them down, which should not be that difficult. We also have the ability, we have like these side cannons on the ship. Um, oh, that was not good. I could ram these guys too, which would, would work fine, I guess. Um, we also have the ability, you may have noticed like the Y button, or a prompt to, to use the Y button showed up. Uh, what that is, is like, after you do damage, there will be weak points and you can hit those with more uh, specif uh, specific cannons in order to uh, do damage and eventually sink the ship. It did, this is the kind of thing that I can imagine becoming a little laborious by the end of the game, but as of right now, I'm still very much, uh, you know, wrapped up in the novelty uh, of the uh, kind of sea battles here. And it handles really well. It's my main problem with, uh, did that ship get sunk? Yes. It's my main problem when, uh, when a lot of games try to do like, oh, we're like a third person action game, plus we have naval combat or something like that, or plus we have space combat. Oftentimes that, that compromise, uh, you know, in increases the appeal of the game, but at the cost of making, you know, both of those aspects a little bit more shallow than, than they would be in an otherwise more uh, specified game or narrowed focus game. Uh, whereas, oh, we can loot that ship, excellent. Uh, whereas in this, you know, both the, the third person stuff is done adequately, if you're a fan of the Assassin's Creed franchise anyway, uh, and the way that they handle gameplay. And the, the naval stuff is really satisfying, like, they, they handle in intuitively, but it's also not just like super easy to do this. It, it requires a whole different skill set, and there is a little bit of a learning curve associated with it as well, uh, which is really cool. I, I think they've done a very good job with the, the seafaring stuff here. It's the stuff that's on land that people are going to have more of a problem with, and not because it's bad, but because it's, you know, Assassin's Creed, which a lot of people are perhaps justifiably a little bit tired of. It's really, really easy. That guy was just floating in the air. Let's try to ignore that. Um, it's really, really easy to... Um, fire your weapons, which I like a lot, but uh, again, it, it's a totally new style of gameplay for me that I'm actually having a great time with so far. The sailing stuff right now I consider by far the strongest. Sailing for that island. I know the place. A natural stronghold used by a French captain named Ducasse. Julian Ducasse, the Templar. Name's right. Didn't know he had a title. I know the man. And if he sees my ship, he'll know it from his time in Havana, meaning he may wonder at who's sailing her now. I can't risk that. And I don't want to lose that galleon. Let's think on. Maybe wait till it's dark before hopping aboard. All right, so that is the end of that mission. Um, we may... Did I complete? No, no optional objectives here. Um, we may be sailing back to an island now, so I'll take the wheel here. And now you'll get some sea shanty stuff, but we'll try to sail to this island. Sometimes you can fast travel, uh, sometimes you can't. I think you've got to have been to an area before you can fast travel to it. So we'll loot this crate and rescue this person. Uh, we can upgrade our ship as time goes on. We can upgrade our uh, equipment as time goes on. Hopefully we'll be on land uh, for the next mission. The game does a pretty good job of mixing up, you know, on-foot mission, nautical mission, on-foot mission, nautical mission. And this allows you to kind of experience the variety in gameplay. Uh, the structure of the game feels a lot like another Ubisoft property. You can see the sea shanties here. I'll, I'll shut up for a second. These will be stuck in your goddamn head for hours afterwards. And it's weird for me to, and it seems almost shallow for me to be like, well, you know, the sea shanties are a major selling point. They fucking are. Like, it, it really makes you feel like you're, a, you know, an a able seaman. And yes, I chose those words deliberately, and I'm not necessarily proud of myself, but uh, it, it really does a good job of, of kind of immersing you. I'm not saying when I play this game, I think I'm a pirate, but what I am saying is that, you know, it, it puts you way more within the atmosphere of the game. Uh, what I was going to say is that the structure of the game from the mission standpoint and the, the open world kind of side of things is uh, very similar to another Ubisoft property, uh, Far Cry 3, which uh, I played it last year. There's a lot of side stuff that you can do. You can hunt animals if you are so inclined. You can use the furs and skins from those animals uh, in order to, you know, make new holsters and weapons and stuff like that. To some extent, that is... Let me just look at my map here for a second to make sure I'm sailing properly. I bet they would have loved to have had this, uh, you know, hundreds of years ago when they were trying to navigate the Caribbean. But anyway, uh, we'll set a waypoint here. Uh, and 
that doesn't really do too much for us. But we can see that we're about a kilometer away, but that'll go down pretty quickly. Most of the boat travel doesn't take more than, you know, two or three minutes. And the sailing is really relaxing, even though I can imagine that if this campaign stretches on for 20 or 30 hours, then I'll be like, oh, please just let me finish it. But uh, as of right now, I'm still kind of enthralled with it, and I think the sailing stuff is very well done. But, um... Yeah, if I have a complaint about the game from a structure standpoint, it's just there's too much stuff to do. Uh, you know, when you make a, an open world game, you compromise a little bit. You have a lot of stuff to do, you give the player a lot of freedom, but also it's, for my taste, a little bit less tight and uh, focused than a game. And I'm, I'm going to use an example that not a lot of people are going to necessarily like, but Splinter Cell Blacklist comes to mind. Again, another Ubisoft game that I liked a great deal, actually. Um, that, that game was really tight, focused, linear missions, and I don't think it necessarily suffered as a result of it. A lot of people say, like, oh, you know, linearity is a, a negative. I don't necessarily agree with that. When I'm faced with a, a game like Assassin's Creed Black Flag, I sort of consider it, um, a, a little bit overwhelming, if that makes sense. Let's start this mission here. I consider it a little bit overwhelming, because there's just so much stuff to do, and sometimes I'm just like, can I just go to the next mission? Like, can you just give me mission, 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 instead of uh, constantly all the side stuff? It's nice, because there's a lot, the game's sticky, right? Like, there's a lot of stuff you can do uh, to, to spend your time with it, uh, but by the same token, I think it sacrifices depth for breadth a little bit. We do not plunge headlong into folly on the orders of a single madman, but act according to our own Collective madness! <laughs> the object of our attention is a square-rigged galleon, and we want her for the advantage she'll bring Nassau. So I'll put it to the vote. All those in favor of storming this cove and taking this ship. Stomp and shout I! Aye. Aye. Those who oppose, whimper nay. Never was the King's Council so unified. Okay, uh, so my new objective is to reach the jungle's exit, so I should be able to uh, just swim through here, and hopefully we'll get a peek of the kind of daytime environments here, because they are really, really nice to look at. Uh, and, and we'll see here. And the Caribbean, of course, a, t a totally different uh, environment than either, you know, uh, uh, colonial era... America or either, um, you know, Renaissance era Italy for sure. Now the platforming stuff still works really well. I'm glad that we're getting an opportunity to show off um, the, uh, yeah, I guess I want to go this way. Uh, we're getting an opportunity to show off what really made the Assassin's Creed franchise seem to be so novel and, and kind of shine when it came out, obviously, you know, along with games like Uncharted and whatnot. Um, but yeah, the, the parkouring and the platforming stuff still works pretty well. If I have an annoyance with the game, it's almost that it works too well sometimes. And it can be annoying, like, to just be like, I'm, I'm running down a road, I'm running down a road, and then, you know, I move the analog stick ever so slightly, and then like, oh, did we, is that a sea shanty? No, it's an animus piece, okay. Uh, you can also collect extra sea shanties in the, uh, in the environment, almost the same way that you would collect, like, uh, a, you know, a piece of the animus, for example. Um, that, okay, was kind of lucky for me, I suppose. I did not know that this was going to happen. Maybe we can still climb out this. This is the first one of these, like, scripted platforming segments I think I've ever seen. Uh, in the game, so that was a little strange for me and a little jarring, but that's fine. Um, but yeah, the, my, my complaint sometimes is that it almost works too well, so sometimes I, I like kind of stick to things and platform across things that I don't want to, if that makes sense. Like, I just want to get from point A to point B, but instead, it's like, well, would you like to go from point A to point B climbing on top of this roof and doing a, dancing a little jig on top of these, like, uh, poles along the way? Not necessarily, but, uh, you know, when you want it to work, it works, and when you don't want it to work, it works as well, which I guess can be a negative. So we're in a restricted area right here, which means if I come across somebody, uh, they will immediately become sort of hostile to me. In terms of the weapons in the game, uh, I haven't really been messing around with too much other than uh, what is fairly normal for the Assassin's Creed franchise. Uh, hidden blades and, and like blunderbusses so far. So I'm just going to hide in the vegetation here and I will use my Sam Fisher-esque whistle. And if I do this enough, this guy will come over here and then I'll just assassinate him in the brush and it'll be good to go. Of course, it is easier um, to stealth kill people, but also, like as mentioned, it is not very difficult at all uh, to simply, uh, you know, fight them hand-to-hand -hand melee style as well. So we'll loot his ammo here and see if he's got any bullets for us. Now, the real question is, he's got 10 real. Okay, where do we go? Looks like we probably go down here. General rule of video games. Wherever there's more enemies, that's where you go. Uh, we may be able to pull off a double assassination here. We'll see. 
Uh, or, you know, I could just walk up and, and shoot one of them in the face and then fight the other one hand to hand. It, it would work out totally fine either way. It really is a kind of... It, this game feels like a really good, I wouldn't necessarily say perfect, but a really good iteration on the Assassin's Creed formula. But it also makes me think that maybe, you know, the series could do with a year off or something like that to reinvent it to a certain extent. I know that Assassin's Creed is not necessarily meant to be Splinter Cell. It's not meant to be like a hardcore uh, stealth action game. And to a certain extent, it allows you to be uh, more fluid in, in what you do. Uh, as opposed to maybe focusing on trial and error and stuff like that. That being said, uh, the ability to survive in melee combat, at least so far, not just survive, but thrive in melee combat, has been uh, one of the greatest negatives that I've had with the game so far. So again, that, that guy just totally saw us, and we can just walk up and stab him. It's not a major problem, it's not a major detriment to the, the experience of this game, uh, but it does kind of lend a little bit of credence to the idea that, you know, maybe this series would be better off taking a year off to, to really come up with something uh, a little bit new as opposed to uh, maybe just refining the formula a little bit. As it is though, I think this is a, a, a fairly refined uh, version of what uh, these guys have been working on for many, many years now. Um, let's jump down here. I should point out, um, just while I'm, you know, repeatedly stealth killing the, the same kind of look-alike Spanish dudes here over and over, um, one of the things that some people, you know, I might not necessarily consider it a negative, but you should probably want to know about it, because I know some people have strong feelings about it. Uh, this does boot via Uplay on Steam. So you buy the game on Steam, you install it on Steam, and then when you launch the game, you launch uh, you launch Uplay as well. And then, you know, Uplay is used to, to download the updates and stuff like that. It's silly in my opinion. I, I still don't understand kind of why Uplay exists, but uh, obviously Ubisoft has their own kind of uh, vision for how things work with DRM and stuff like that. And it's it's just a necessary reality. For what it's worth, um, I didn't find Uplay super annoying when I was playing Splinter Cell. And, uh, you know, I spent 50 hours with that game. And I haven't found Uplay very annoying when I've been playing through this so far, except when it's like, do you want to share your the sweet kill that you made or like that score that you got in that mission? And I'm like, you know what? I'm okay for now. Um, I, if I wanted to do that, I would just, you know, tweet about it or something. Uh, so, I, I thought I heard that Uplay was like going away, but it is still here for now. So, we're uh, approaching where we're going to be reaching this jungle's exit, and we could possibly be um, coming to the close uh, the, the close of this mission. But my guess is that this is probably uh, just like phase one of this mission. Hey, this is a pretty good point for us to look down here uh, and, you know, talk about how good the game looks. Really, I haven't touched on it too, too much so far. It's a really, really stellar looking game. Uh, hopefully that comes across in the video because you know sometimes it doesn't but th this genuinely is uh, One of the the best looking games. I think I've ever played in my entire life And I have no idea how it looks on the other consoles, but on the, on the PC version. Uh, it, it looks absolutely fantastic uh, I didn't play Assassin's Creed 3 as mentioned and uh, so of course I didn't play it on the PC I don't know if this is uh, a substantial uh, improvement over that, but uh, it wouldn't surprise me either way I, I can't really complain about the graphics so far uh, and I, I certainly can't complain about the frame rate either. Most of the time, it, it runs at an incredibly smooth frame rate. I, I'm, I don't have as much of an eye for frame rate as uh, some other people, so I can't with authority say that it's, you know, X frames per second, or it's not X frames per second. I think I made a terrible mistake. <laughs> I really thought I could survive that. Um, but I will say it looks very, very smooth, and I have noticed very few frame rate hiccups. Mind you, I do have a, a fairly powerful PC, although it has been a couple of years since I built it. Uh, but yeah, it handles well. And you know, like Splinter Cell, it was also, oh, we totally just go over here. Um, like Splinter Cell, uh, exceptionally well optimized. I'm recording with Fraps right now, and the frame rate doesn't really appear to have taken much of a hit at all. Then again, you know, when you um, are, are playing a game in 60 frames per second, and then it drops to 30, eventually you just become used to it. Uh, which is not to say that, you know, a, a game being 30 frames per second, or locked to 30 frames per second especially, is not a bad thing. I'm just saying, you know, if the frame rate was pretty not great right now, I probably would not know it. But it, inevitably, as soon as I turn off Fraps, I'm always like, Oh, that looks a lot smoother when Fraps isn't running. Uh, is this the same way I started? Oh, no, it, it definitely will not be, because there's enemies over here. So, um, ooh, I have been discovered, but I can just kind of duck into this dense vegetation over here and probably be A-OK. -okay. Uh, wouldn't surprise me if I end up getting engaged in some melee combat here. Let's be honest here, the AI is not particularly stellar. Um, they mostly just exist as, uh, you know, fodder for you to, to cut down. I, I kind of feel like if you're playing an Assassin's Creed game at this point, you're playing it for the, the experience of being like, uh, you know, like a badass, basically. Okay, this guy has an axe. That's going to be annoying. But there's also another... Oop, there's another move that you can do with these heavy guys. Is he seriously going to, like, chuck a grenade at me? Uh, scary, get out of here! I've never seen that before! Has it exploded yet? Um... Alright, so we'll just counter this guy to death. Um, this is a move I haven't shown off in the video so far. 
uh, is these guys. You can press the A button and break their defenses because, you know, the fat guy equals hardier defense in, in basically every game with fighting in it ever. Uh, so let me just break his defenses one more time and just push him around there and then, you know, we'll cut him down. Oh, he still lived. Okay, this guy's actually fairly strong uh, relative to most of the guys that we come across here. Okay, break his defense. Oh, jeez, I just got killed there. No, I didn't get killed. I got very nearly killed. Uh, let's run away from this man and hopefully he'll explode in his own grenade. We do have regenerating health, but we've got to wait a second for it to come back. We can just shoot him. Did he just actually block that? Or did that just stun him for a minute? I think it just stunned him for a minute. Alright, let's see if I can actually uh, get the kill here. So let's break his defense. Right, like that. Oh, and then I got stabbed myself. Not killed yet, though. So we'll parry this guy. And of course, after talking about how uh, easy the combat is and how that's actually like a an objective negative on getting my ass kicked, um, this is, believe you me, not the norm. All right, so we'll duck out of the way. Break his defense, preferably. Break his defense. Okay, maybe I've, I've mashed the buttons too much there to make it work. Okay, break his defense and then go to town on him. All right, he's dead. We can actually pick up his axe if we wanted to. Is this guy gonna shoot at me? Sometimes there are, um, you know, sharpshooters who will, who will take a shot. Um, does he see me? I don't think so. I think he's just suspicious. Okay, that was like by far the hardest uh, spell of combat I've ever had in the game. So it's good that it showed up here. That being said, I imagine that would probably be a lot easier to handle if I, um, you know, was not talking at the same time. Oh, oh is this a sea shanty or it's an animus fragment? Okay, so I think I've been discovered again. But again, I should just be able to kind of sprint away. I am faster than most of the Spanish army at this point. I may not want to just sprint headlong into these guys. Um, I could see that maybe causing some problems. But there also may be like dense vegetation in here that I can hide in, for example. Um, and these guys don't see me. He may see me now. Yes, he does. <laughs> I really thought that that like cabbage patch would be uh, acceptable. So when we go up against kind of just normal baddies, uh, it should be relatively easy. Like, I, I I don't understand. I mean, I guess I understand from like a gameplay standpoint why this happens. But it's always frustrating when you're like fighting uh, enemies and they just stand still. Uh, look, like I just moved away and, and now I'm totally hidden. I can probably get a stealth kill. Yep. Okay. Uh, I have been discovered again, but again, this is just kind of like your, your average enemy. So uh, if I just parry him, I should just be able to cut him up pretty quickly. I could probably successfully kill like 50 people in one area uh, and, and just like constantly hide back and forth between the vegetation. And again, I, I'm still enjoying the game, but it's showing its age, not from like a technical standpoint, uh, but certainly from a um, kind of a design standpoint. It, it just feels like... A little like 2010 if that makes sense. Which is fine, um, but it is what it is. Uh, where where do I have to go again? I think I have to become anonymous to actually get on the uh, to actually get on the ship. And I go and I can hide inside of this closet for a while, and then we should be able to pop out. I wonder if I just like get on the ship and leave. That would be an okay way to end the mission, I suppose. Certainly, they won't make me kill absolutely everybody inside of this area. But has anyone, is anyone still aggroed to me? I don't think so. Um, weirdly enough, we'll probably be able to hide in this like sparse sugarcane field here. Yes, um, a couple of people did discover us, but we should be able to stealth kill them as they walk in. And then we may be good to go. So where's guy number two? He just actually decided to, to peace out. Uh, now I'm only, st uh, uh, they're only suspicious to me, so they're no longer actually uh, aggroed for me. Which means it may be possible for me to just get on the ship and sail it away. I may just like shoot this guy in the head. Usually works pretty well. <laughs> He's not actually dead, and apparently nobody heard it. Oh! Or have I been discovered now? There's one more guy. The other guy just turned away. This is actually a really good uh, demonstration of kind of some of the problems that I have with the AI in the game. I feel like I'm basically like just coming up with a consistent list of negatives and being like, but the game's still good. And I genuinely believe that, you know, things are not always black and white and games are oftentimes more than the sum of their parts. This is a really satisfying game, it just has a, a lot of uh, things that are very easy to bring up as, uh, as complaints and also very easy to demonstrate as complaints. This is not an experience where I'm like, oh, I don't understand why I don't necessarily feel uh, the, 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 I don't feel the same way about this that, that some people do. This is an experience where I'm like, yeah, you know, I the, the problems with this are very easily demonstrated, if that makes sense. But the water is so beautiful. Also, that sweet little uh, dance there was very nice. Alright, so this guy quite clearly sees us and will shoot us. 
Um, which may be a problem unless I can actually pull him down or just stealth kill him. Um, the enemies with, with firearms are actually by far, apart from those like heavy axe uh, house carls dude, dudes, um, the most frustrating enemies to deal with in the game. But they also take forever to shoot sometimes, which maybe is, is historically accurate, but is also uh, annoying. Because, well, annoying for them because I can just kill them so easily. This is what I mean, the parkour system is sometimes too good. I just wanted to run straight at that guy instead I had, well, cool execution nonetheless. But uh, instead I had to, um, you know, jump on some fences and stuff in order to get to him, which was kind of silly. So, again, I, I reached the jungle's exit. Have I accidentally gone in the wrong direction here? That was not where I meant to jump in, as one might expect. Um, I, maybe I can't get on the boat while I'm still kind of wanted. I wonder if I can climb up these cannons. Usually, if you can, if you can see it, you can climb it in this game. Uh, so we'll see. I'm not even sure if this is exactly where I'm supposed to be going because my waypoint has kind of disappeared as I've gotten involved in more of this combat. Uh, so we should be able to murder this guy. Has anyone else discovered us? No, this guy's just gonna kind of dip down and up inside of the environment here. But I'll just press the button and he'll be deceased. Um. Is the wheel at the front of the ship in this case? Oh god, what is he doing? I like to shake it! Oh, oh, well, of course he stopped as I looked at him. Alright, so let's jump over this part. Should be able to do an assassination here. What's wrong with this guy? I have no problem with that guy, unless you're decked out in these powdered wigs. Uh, I'm not overly concerned about your existence, so we'll just shoot this guy in the heart, basically. He'll die, and we'll have a couple of- Oh, Jesus! This is actually like a dude that we um, encountered earlier on in the game. Remember the gift you gave me? Well, it answers just fine. Fist of Peter! As bold as a musket ball, and still half as sharp. I'm sorry about this, mate. But I can't risk you telling your Templar friends about me still kicking around. I pity you, Bukenyi. After all you have seen, after all we showed you of our order, still, you embrace the life of an ignorant and aimless rogue. What's this? Is petty larceny the extent of your ambition? Have you no mind to comprehend the scope of ours? All the empires on Earth abolished, a free and open world without parasites like you. Que l'enfer que tu trouveras soit le fruit de ton insouciance. All right, so I guess that was our overall goal, to murder that man there. That may end the mission, despite the fact that I have like four dudes left to kill here. We'll let this cutscene uh, finish up here, and then I'll probably uh, finish my video on the single player of Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag so far. Uh, this is one of those games that I actually fully intend to finish off camera, so that, that's basically the headiest praise I can give it. Will this be on my year-end list, top ten games of the year? Probably not, no. Um, but I, I like it nonetheless. That's up to you to decide whether or not it's worth 60 bucks for you on the single player alone. Um, the multiplayer, really fun. We'll talk about that in a video that will probably go, be going up tomorrow. And the reason I split them up, again, I mentioned a couple of times. But they boot in different executables, which is freaking weird. Uh, and also, I'm probably going to play the multiplayer for like 45 minutes. So I th thought that was better than coming out with like a two-hour video. Uh, this is the Animus stuff. It's, it's, it's full of, you know, in-jokes and whatnot. Uh, but in any case, this is my Let's Look at of Assassin's Creed 4. There will be a link in the video description to pick up the game if you're interested. This is merely the single player. Overall, thumbs up. The problems with this game are the same problems that uh, are kind of endemic to the Assassin's Creed franchise at this point. If you have a serious problem uh, with the way that the franchise is gone, this is not going to change your mind. This is not a reinvention of the, the series. This is merely a refinement of it. Uh, that being said, I'm finding it pretty satisfying. It's, it's, it's got some rough edges. That being said, uh, I still think it's an enjoyable experience, if one that uh, maybe is a little bit transient. So again, there will be a link to pick up Assassin's Creed 4 uh, Black Flag on Steam if you are interested. Of course, if you enjoyed the video, I would encourage you to like it. That's the easiest way to show your support, and it means the world to me. And of course, you can subscribe to see more first impressions if you're interested. As always, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you next time.